this boat is going to be lifted today in this shipyard. This shipyard. <laughs> All we're waiting for now is for them to finish the trailer because they kind of customized the bed, the crib, for our boat to fit on nice and snug so it can be pulled out. Hi, I'm Ben. And I'm MP. We love the ocean so we decided to make it our home by buying a massive wooden schooner which is unfortunately sinking. A lot of people believe our boat is doomed but we refuse to settle on that thought and we are willing to do whatever it takes to bring it back to its former glory. Join us on this refurbishing journey and wish us luck! Hmm. We are really really nervous because the boat is from 2007 and it has never been lifted. Since the day it touched water, that was the last time it was on air. It's been dry beached which means you just navigate it onto a beach, wait for the tide to drop but that means the keel never gets lifted off the ground so this is the first time that's gonna happen. As the keel has never been lifted there is a chance the keel might break and that would mean three months of staying here which we really don't want. We can't, the boat that's um, it will be in front of us, above us, has to be out in a month so that's definitely not gonna happen. We are really <coughs> scared and nervous but also excited because it's a really big day in the story of our boat. Yeah, right? Both MP and I were super nervous about this lift, but we couldn't wait to fix the problems that were causing us to have so much water in our bilge, which was keeping us up all night out of stress and just having to check if the pump was working or not. You might recognize the next video from our first episode. Ben was literally in the engine room passing me buckets of bilge water for real. We filled eight buckets for the take and the bilge was still quite full. So if we get lifted, hopefully I won't have to spend as much time as I had to before trying to get the pump working to save our boat. So our big dilemma about lifting it before we head to the south is what happens now is all the boat is resting in the water and that allows the pressure to be divided evenly. The moment a boat gets taken, especially wooden, gets taken out of the water and put on a trailer, the pressure points change and that's why it's, we don't know the structure of the bottom of our boat. So it's going to be very risky to see what happens when the pressure points of our boat change onto a wooden frame. Will it break or will it not? So this is a boat that's already been lifted. It's I think mean, five meters longer than ours, two meters wider on a trailer as well there is a massive massive winch in front of it that pulls the trailer where it's resting on up and down if you look back this is where we're going to end up they're going to adjust this trailer just like this one here they can choose the angle to be flatter if you have a very wide flat bottom boat as ours is a little bit more u-shaped they are going to lift the sides up a bit so it's as comfortable as possible for the boat and offering the most support possible. So this will get lowered into the water, our boat will sit on it, when the tide goes down we'll rest on top of this trailer and then they can pull it up with as much support as possible. We ignore that boat in the back, that's abandoned, there's even a papaya tree growing on it. So they went to our boat, took some measurements inside and had a look at outside and they're busy applying these measurements onto the trailer right now. the bubbles? Yeah, it means the bed's here the under us already.
can you help me? Seven is big. That's the back. And this is the front. Four massive cables, a big winch and a big trailer. So I went to the back and these back stays us. Super loose. They were a bit loose before. I think that means that the boat's a bit soft in the middle. Mixed feelings, mixed emotions here. Yes. So we are now half. Lifted, quarter lifted, the boat's still intact. We're hearing some cracks and creaks. I think that's just the wood rubbing. So far, so good. Let's show them where we are. Crazy, crazy nervous, but I'm so happy oh. and nervous and happy and nervous. Oh, feel that. This is like, I've seen boats get lifted up with a travel lift. This is like how they fix container ships, I think. And then at the end, they just yeah. rocked in the water. It's insane. It's happening. And uh, we haven't broken yet. I don't think we will. A boat. So I believe. The other day, I dropped the dinghy engine in the water and that was the universe telling us something has to break or something has to sink. And I'm happy it was the dinghy engine and not this. I think that's our universe helping us. Exhausted, and I didn't do any of the work. <laughs> Hopefully, the last of the water that we're gonna have to empty out the boat in a while. I know it's a wooden boat, we will have water in it soon, but hopefully, not in these quantities. We have a coral reef! <laughs> you know the movie Nemo when he comes and they all live in uh, sea life, I think? Imagine all the fish and sea life that live under here. Good job this camera doesn't record smell. Oh, indeed. 
We can't tell you how happy we are. It got lifted in one piece. I think it's where we leave. As you can <laughs> see, we're gonna. We hopefully we're not gonna stay here for too long. We're even hesitating of scraping the hull because that might pull out some of the caulking or calafeto in Portuguese, and that might create more holes. So as we know, we've made a map of the holes on the inside, and we're gonna fix what's needed and fix the vis visible holes and leave. But for now I want to take five minutes to celebrate that we made it to Dryland after 13 years and that we survived. Uh. <laughs> so happy for you guys. Here we have a massive hole in our hole surrounded by a few little worms. One, two, three, four. I'm sure there are going to be a lot more hidden under all of this. The dilemma is now, after we've lifted it, do we scrape it all off to find all the holes or do we just stick with the holes that we know are in the boat that are causing an infiltration now? Zippy, I think we have to scrape it all off. Yes, yeah, I think so. So we decided to risk it and scrape it all as that would mean we could find every hole possible. What's next on the list? Cleaning the hole. We're going to clean the hole. So what cleaning the hole means, we're going to get these tools. And we're going to scrape all that off. But because we have such a long, high, big surface to do, we're going to put this on a time lapse and enjoy. We need to clean the rudder so we have a better sliding movement in the water. Yeah, so we have less resistance. Oh. oh. Uh. Do you think our propeller needs to be clean? Yeah, I thought you lost your jeans the other day. Yeah. Um. So, to summarize everything, we're going to find little holes, we found a few already and we're going to fill them with some epoxy, I hope that will work for the trip for now. Clean the prop and the rudder, just so that we have a safer, faster trip, travel and we hope the I sooner see. we get lift, put back in the water, the sooner we can leave. We're going to have to do this propeller soon because the tide is coming up. Yeah, we are feeling very, very tempted to do everything now that we are lifted, but we really want to go south. Yeah, so we are really sticking just to the base. Whatever basics. we remove now, we're going to have to replace with either a paint. So let's leave the boat as it is if we can. Today was a very, very exciting day, it was very important, it was very high emotions. We went from nervous and excited to then very happy and relieved. And yeah, we worked very hard. Cleaning the hole, checking stuff, and I think the most tiring 
even more tiring than scraping off the hole the whole dirt on the hole was just the moment that we were going to be lifted and like the nose came, the bow came out of the water and it's like just that whole That's stress true. we so. had so much tension in our bodies that that made us exhausted but where are we sitting now on the boat on the dry it's all in one piece we just got to do some quick fixes and tonight's yeah. gonna be an early night yeah, and we my can, nose is blocked. We can sleep the whole night because we don't need to be waking up every two hours to check if the pumps are working yeah. and we're not sinking. We're gonna sleep through the night for once. Oh, that's amazing. Good night, everyone. Wait, I just want to say some, one more thing. Oh. I'm really thankful to everyone involved on this operation today. Thank you to all our friends for the support. And, and our family supporting us from far away. Yeah, thank you very much. Today was a very important day and we wouldn't do it without you. Good night, everyone. We also want to send a massive thank you to all our patrons and the people who have donated to help us out with this project and who believe in us so much. Thank you! So thank you so, so much to everyone that believes in us. Thank you, Duke and Roberta, our friends from Odd Life. Thanks, Adam. Thank you, Patrick. And Joost. Thanks, Joe. Thank you, Hugh. Thanks, Scott. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Andy. Thanks, Clay. And thank you so much, Bob and Pirata. You guys are really making the difference for our project to come true.